Brisbane day and everybody I'm just making this video because something quite amazing has just happened this morning I was talking to my wife about something that goes through my head from time to time and it's basically this theory I've had for many many years that the Scandinavian people must have had more literacy than we generally assume and I know most scholars would say no that's not right there was just you know, short bursts of runic writing on wax tablets or scratched on bark, obviously on rune stones, but not really full literature like what developed in Iceland a couple of hundred years after the Viking Age. But my thinking about, now I can't prove this, but I think that because of the constant contact with Anglo-Saxon England from the late 700s, early 800s, and the fact that there was the whole Dane law, all of Northern England became essentially Danish, you know, Scandinavian. There was a couple of Norse kings, you know, Canute, half a Canute, the mighty Harald Hardrada had a good go at becoming the king. But I just can't, they're such intelligent people, everything they do shows great intelligence. And when you think about it like why wouldn't they have gone you know this writing's pretty useful stuff there's a book called codex runaticus which i'd like to look more into it's from the christian era but i just have a gut feeling there was a lot more writing going on in scandinavia than given credit and one of the big problems with the viking culture is that things weren't made out of stone they were mostly made out of timber so they don't last like the, the stone monuments in the drier countries down south in the Mediterranean, those sort of places. And just the fact that, you know, records from a thousand years ago are very rare in any case. But I think that the persecution of the official church against what they consider the devilish pagan beliefs of the old uh, Norse people would have led them to destroy anything that was written about those times. So anyway, this morning I was talking to my wife about this and she's not really that into this stuff. She loves the fact that I love it, but it's not her thing. So she just goes along with my passion for it. But I was on, on about it. I was saying, you know, I really do feel that they must have had a lot more writing and written things that were destroyed either by time or, you know, getting dropped overboard on a ship or deliberately destroyed, which is more likely, as far as I'm concerned, by the, the crusading Christian kings, especially in that later period, once Christianity really got its hooks in Scandinavia, once the kings started to capitulate and say, OK, we'll become Christians. And people were becoming Christians you know, right throughout the north at different times for trade, you know, about the people that had Thor's hammer and a cross just so they could go both ways. And that's all a sort of a given in Viking studies. But the reason I'm making this video is I, I'm on about Viking superpowers. And one of the superpowers is something that I think a lot of people experience is that strange coincidences, strange serendipity, the feeling like what's the chances of that these two things happening at once so i'm talking about this i'll just play you what my wife just sent me i asked her i, I didn't coach her i said just send me what you remember for, from what we were talking about this morning this morning on the 23rd of may davy was telling me about how he was pretty sure that the vikings would have had some kind of writing because they were in contact with other people for a long time and more than likely the church got rid of it because it would have been like the devil's work or something like that. So I um pretty sure this is all I remember, but it's all true. Um, okay, bye. So there you go. That's my dear little wife. She's not an historian. She doesn't really know about runes or the ins and outs of this. But I just, I got her to record that because, you know, I wanted to get a third party saying, yes, Dave was talking about this this morning. 
and I've been thinking about it all day. So I, I sat down here tonight uh, doing something completely different, scanning some things, nothing to do with Viking superpowers. And I was waiting for uh, an app to update. So I thought, oh, I'll just have a look at my library. So I turned around, saw my blue books there, and I grabbed this book at random. Okay, and I didn't know what it was. I, I couldn't remember. So I thought, what's this going to be? Ah, the Saga of the Volsungs. So this is one of the really, really old stories. It's about King Attila the Hun and uh, a king called Gunnar. And it's a story I know a bit about, but a story I haven't, I haven't fully read this. But this is a, a beautiful edition that's, can you see that? So one side's Norse, Old Norse, and the other side's English. So extremely interesting, and for somebody like me learning the language, it's really cool to be able to just go back and forth, and most of the time I can work out what the words are from my knowledge of the language, and it also gives me clues. So I just randomly opened it up like this, literally just went, oh, I'll just read something while I'm waiting for this app to update. And I read King Atli, that's Attila the Hun, had heard that this king called Sigurd had a massive amount of gold and then found out that King Gunnar and his brother had the gold and had, had vast treasure. So he decides to send some of his men to invite these two to come and visit him. He sends a guy called Vingi as his emissary. Now, his queen is their sister, and she's, you know, she's forced to be the queen against her will. And she's a pretty brave character and a really great story further on, which to me is the, the best. People talk about women warriors. It's, it's probably the best thing in the sagas about women being really gnarly fighters. And personally, I do believe that they can be extremely gnarly. Um, it's uncommon and it's not sort of normal for somebody five foot two to be able to stand against somebody six foot two big male but anyway she's quite a character and it says the queen knew of their private talks and suspected treachery against her brothers gudrun carved runes and she took a gold ring and knotted it knotted to it a hair from a wolf and handed it to the king's envoys they then set off as the king had commanded but before they went ashore vingi who's the agent of attila saw the runes that she'd written and altered them, making it seem as if Gudrun urged them in the runes to come and visit him. Then they came to King Gunnar's hall and they were made welcome. Large fires were lit. After that, they drank merrily the best of drink. And then Vingi says, you know, come on, boys, King Atli, King Attila, he's, he really wants to meet you guys. He's going to shower you with Gifts and honours and helmets and shields and gold and all sorts of cool stuff. Lots of horses, broad lands. The two brothers sort of say, well, what's the point of this? We've got more gold than anybody else. We've got more swords and we don't really need anything. They sort of basically decide that it's a bit ill-advised to go. And then one of the brothers, Hogni, says... I was surprised to see a wolf's hair knotted to a gold ring when I looked at the jewels King Atli sent us. And it may be that Gudrun thinks he has wolfish feelings towards us and she doesn't want us to go, which she didn't. She knew it was a trap. Vingi now showed him the runes which he said Gudrun had sent. So he's he sort of invited them and said, oh, by the way, here's a letter from your sister written in runes. And yeah, well, it said she carved runes. So that sounds like it's on a piece of timber, doesn't it? She got a knife and carved them, which is probably a normal way to send a letter on thin pieces of, of timber. There would have been a lot of timber around at the time. Maybe they had special pieces made just for this purpose. And then it says the king's got really drunk, and which is always the start of bad decisions when people get really, really drunk. So they've read these runes and it seems to say, look, come along, you know, come along. And then everyone now went to bed, but the kings remained drinking with a couple of their men. Then Hogni's wife, whose name was Kostbera, a very beautiful woman, went up and looked at the runes. Gunnar's wife was named 
Glomvor. She was of great presence and character. The women poured out the drinks and the kings became very drunk. They got dragged off to bed and it says, when the men had drunk all they wanted, they went to bed. Kostbera, the beautiful woman, began looking at the runes and read the characters and saw that something different had been carved over them from what was underneath and the runes were confusing, but by reason of her astuteness, she managed to see through them. After this, she went to bed and lay at her husband's side, and when they awoke, she said to him, said to Hogni, you mean to set off, but that's unwise. Better go another time. And you're not so good at reading runes if you think your sister is sending for you on this occasion. I read the runes, and I'm surprised if such a clever woman carved them in a confused way but underneath your death seems to be shown, and either she missed out a letter or else others tampered with them. And now you must hear my dream. So she goes on to tell him all these ill-omened dreams, and as often happens with these sort of stories, he's just an idiot. He's just going, oh, no, it's not really a bad omen. It's probably, you know, he, he keeps turning it aside to something nice. But I get a number of things from this. Firstly, I get the fact that I received this completely at random, yet it's exactly what I've been talking about today. And cross my heart, I don't remember ever finding anything in the, in the sagas about sending a message with runes. I, I remember Ayik Skallagrimson, I should say that properly, Ayik Skallagrimson, the great Viking poet, writing short messages on, on sticks, I think, and or, you know, writing spells. That's what he was doing, writing spells. But I don't remember an actual message like that. And I feel like this this confirms it's a sort of a, a superpower to basically be able to get these synchronicities happening, which leads you to a new, like, it, it sort of opens up doorways for you. It gives you clues that you can follow up. And for me, this is just part of my journey creating Viking superpowers, this whole thing, not just these videos, but the book I'm writing. And I, I plan to write a number of books and I've got a whole lot of other things that are gonna come out of this. And every time something like this happens, it feels like a superpower because it, it feels like I'm being led. It feels like I'm being encouraged that things are being given to me by what my Icelandic friend Marta says is them out there. She she's a bit of a psychic Icelandic old lady who's um, like a a Norn or a Volva, you know, one of those prophetesses. And you know, I wanted to share it with you because a lot of the time we just think, oh yeah, that was a coincidence. But this wasn't a coincidence. I mean, it was completely random. I pulled that book out. I opened up just the page I, I opened to, and there it was, talking about runes. The other thing I want to say about this is that story is supposed to be happening way back, like about 500 AD, but it, it's really indicating quite a high level of literacy amongst all those people. So, that, so the kings can read the message, even though they're not as good as the, the beautiful lady who was able to see that something had been written over the top and it was a little bit illegible and the sister who had written the message warning them had originally sent it um, but the fact that uh, Colbera, I think her name was is that literate, she's able to sort of have a good look while everyone's drunk, she's just having a checking it out you can imagine a sort of stealthily picking up and going somewhere with a candle and looking at it and rubbing it, maybe putting a bit of spit on it and working out What's underneath there? Ooh, crikey, that, that's sort of saying don't come. It's It's been changed cunningly by somebody, but it indicates that it's normal to be sending messages like this to be able to read them. The fact that they're aware of the spelling mistake means there was some you know, pretty strong sense of spelling, which leads you to ask, well, how did they learn to write runes? There must have been teachers. There must have been people you assume teaching the kids at least of the wealthy of the rulers how to do it which really leads you to think well what else were they writing you know like were they 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 say that paper wasn't invented until the chinese invented it 
I think about 1,200. I'm not right off the top of my head sure, but there's lots of things the Romans writ, wrote on papyrus, like Egyptian papyrus paper. They wrote on wood tablets and wax. So who knows what was actually around in those ancient days that's been completely lost. And I have a fond hope that there'll be literacy discovered in archaeological sites or in vaults or in secret collections somewhere.